hello everybody today i'm back again with another video for you all and uh, this time we will not be doing merchant of venice we have done we have completed till act two we all know and uh, we will move on to act three for the class nine students who have seen one also in their examination don't worry i'll give it to them uh, maybe in this week or the next week you'll get it before your examination don't worry even class tens you will get all your works before before time all the videos would be there and uh, there was a request for the daffodils from one of my students so today we will be doing the easy poem that is the daffodils let's start with it the poem daffodils it is written by william wordsworth now before we continue with the poem first of all we must know something about the poet that is william wordsworth now introducing the poet and the way he used to write and the way he used to write his poems, I have written down a small introduction. Let us read that, then we will move into the poem. This is a lyric poetry. What do you mean by lyric poetry? Lyric poetry is some uh, is a type of poem where you talk about the poet's feelings, emotions and state of mind. For example, in this poem, we will be talking about the poet's extreme happiness when he sees the beautiful flowers okay sometimes when you go to the hills and the mountains and you feel very happy why are you happy have you got some award or something no you are just happy by seeing the mountains by seeing the beautiful trees the flowers over there isn't it so when you write about these feelings these emotions these happiness and sadness then it becomes a lyric poetry and this is the style which William Wordsworth uses in this poem also. Now, Wordsworth is also called a romantic poet. Who is a romantic poet? Romantic poets were a, a type of people who used to write their poems regarding based on the beauty of nature. They were very much influenced by the beautiful nature, maybe by the mountains, by the birds. There are few romantic poets like Shelley and Keats who used to write poems about the birds, the beautiful birds, then the wind, they used to write about the sky, they used to write about the mountains. So every these things are what? These are nature only. So because they were influenced by nature, they were called romantic poets. Wordsworth was also a romantic poet. Now, now let us come to this part that why did he suddenly write about daffodils? What had happened that he suddenly decided to write about daffodils? What is daffodil? Daffodil is a kind of wild flower, okay, that grows just wildly here and there beside the lake, beneath the trees. They are wild flowers. They do not require much care. They just grow like that. They are yellow colored, bright yellow colored flowers. See what happens. When Wordsworth was traveling, Wordsworth used to study in Cambridge, okay, in England. So when he was studying in Cambridge, in his free time, he used to visit different parts of England, okay. And once he was walking near a lake at Grasmere in England, he was walking with his sister. He just went to take a walk. And as he was walking over there, he suddenly saw these daffodils on April 15, 1802. He saw these daffodils. He was very happy seeing them. They were so beautiful. He was influenced by the flowers a great deal. And then he came back home and wrote the poem. Okay, now let's move to the poem. Read the first line. I wandered lonely as a cloud. So who is I? I is the poet or the speaker. The speaker is walking in a very lonely way, just like a cloud. You see this picture? You see the winds over here? These, sorry, you see the clouds over here? These clouds are roaming all around the sky, all about the sky, just like that, as if they are taking a walk. Okay, they do not have any proper direction. They are just wandering on the sky, all over the sky. Whenever you go to a mountain, you see these white clouds, isn't it? Okay, so now how does the poet compare this scene with himself? He says that he also does not have any particular purpose for walking on the street. He just thought that, okay, let me, let me just take a walk. Let me go and visit different places in England. So he just went out and started walking through the forest. So just like the cloud wanders in the sky here and there, he was also wandering here and there. So he compares the 
he wonders he he compares himself with the cloud so what kind of figure of speech is this this is a simile simile means it is a figure of speech where we compare two things when two things are compared with each other using like or as so you see you are using as over here this one is used as so when you use like or as to compare two things what are we comparing we are comparing the movement of the speaker with the movement of the cloud both of them are wandering here and there without any particular purpose or direction so this is simile now as he was walking here and there moving here and there like the clouds that floats on high over vales vales means valleys and hills this talks about the clouds just like the see this picture just like these white clouds move over valleys this is a valley and these are the hills so as these clouds move over valleys and hills i was also walking here and there suddenly what happened when all at once i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils so suddenly he comes upon a beautiful show it was a beautiful show what type of a show what did he see he saw beautiful yellow colored white flower wild flowers which is daffodils where were they where were these flowers they were beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering they were moving and dancing in the breeze now does do you think uh, this is a the flowers can really dance no they were not actually dancing they were moving with the wind they were moving to this direction or that direction isn't it once in this direction once in that direction how were they moving they were moving because of the wind as the wind was blowing their heads were moving but the poet uses this beautiful word dancing so what type of figure of speech is this this is personification personification is a figure of speech where you give human qualities or human attributes to things which are inanimate or which normally do are not human beings for example if i say the table is crying so the table does not have life isn't it so the table cannot cry cannot have human emotions similarly these flowers also does not have human emotions but even then they have been they have been given qualities of a human being that they are dancing so this is personification now questions can come like where were the daffodils found the daffodils were found beside the lake beneath the trees okay i already told you that dorothy wordsworth the sister of william wordsworth the poet both of them were walking together and they came beside a lake and suddenly they saw beautiful flowers just by the bank of that river just by the margin of that river or lake now we come to the second stanza in the second stanza what do you see we see a comparison a beautiful comparison he gives a comparison between the stars in the night sky and the daffodils how are they compared with one another see continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way so comparison between stars and flowers how that these stars if you look at the night sky milky way is a galaxy there are millions of stars in the milky way so in the night sky if you look at the sky if you see there are huge number of stars and they are continuous there is no gap in between there are continuous stars in the night sky in the same manner the poet finds the flowers over here there is no gap in between there the flowers are growing in a continuous way there is no gap in between the flowers just like there is no gap in the sky between stars similarly there is no gap between the flowers also there are numerous huge number of flowers without any gap in between so over here also i i think you will be able to understand now this is simile why simile because it is a comparison between the stars and the daffodils how are they compared with one another they are compared using as and therefore it is a simile let's come to the next picture they stretched in never ending line never ending line means they are continuous or oh, now see this picture this is a continuous line these are actually not daffodils but i did not get a picture of daffodils in this manner so let's see this only beside the lake they are continuously spread there is no gap in between all along the margin of this lake 
there are flowers there are daffodils and daffodils and daffodils along the margin of the bay that means all along the margin of this river of this lake you find only daffodils full of daffodils okay so they stretch in a never ending line there is no gap at all between the flowers now these images these are images isn't it we can we can uh, as if imagine that quite like the stars in the sky these daffodils were all along the lake okay so this this kind this creates a kind of image in our brain isn't it we start thinking oh it's just like that night sky all the stars in the night sky just like that all these daffodils were continuously grown beside the lake so this creates an image in our minds in our brain isn't it so this is an image that is why the figure of speech here is an imagery the way the poet compares the beauty of the stars in the sky to the beauty of the flowers growing all along the river creates a kind of image in our minds we we tend to feel it we tend to see it in our minds eye isn't it that is why it is an imagery now 10000 saw i at a glance this one is another figure of speech see at a glance that means if i suddenly look at you i cannot say that how many hairs are there on your head isn't it i cannot count but i can say that okay you have a lot of hair on your head so in the same manner he is using hyperbole over here what is hyperbole hyperbole is another figure of speech what is that it is a figure of speech where you exaggerate where you say something in a heightened way okay you exaggerate a particular thing so that you can express that there were a huge number of flowers in that particular place actually it may so happen that there were not 10000 flowers over there but because the poet wanted us to feel that there were huge number of flowers he exaggerated this idea that as soon as i looked at them i found out that there were 10000 flowers now what were these flowers doing they were tossing their heads in sprightly dance what is sprightly sprightly means very much energetic full of life so what were these flowers doing they were tossing their heads how were they tossing their heads they were tossing their heads because of the wind they were moving this way and that way because of the wind but tossing their heads is a quality which a human being can do normally a flower cannot just toss their head it is because of the wind that they are moving their heads so because this is provided a human quality it will again become personification okay now i'll give you a small summary so that you can understand it better i think this part is very clear it will not be difficult at all see the flowers were stretched all along the margin of the lake it reminded him that means it, it reminded the poet about the stars in the night sky okay now let's come to the third stanza the waves beside now this is another image okay what is the image because of because this is a new image i have given you a new picture so that you can understand it better the waves beside them danced so now i have already told you that see this picture beside this lake the flowers had grown all along the margin of the lake the flowers had grown so now he says that the waves beside them danced the wave, this is also personification the wave is dancing not possible this is the wave does not have any life so human attributes are provided to it so this becomes a personification now the now when the sunlight the rays of the sun falls on this water you must have seen it when you visit a, a place like this all the this the water the waves of the lake or the river they shine they sparkle isn't it so the waves are sparkling in glee as if the waves are very happy the lake is very happy the river water is very happy and they were sparkling why were they sparkling because of the sun because of the rays of the sun although this scene is very very beautiful although we find this this thing this image that the waves of the water are sparkling because of the rays of the sun even then according to the poet the beauty of the flowers was even better than the beauty of these sparkling waves so he says that this scene that the waves are shining under the sun even this beautiful scene is not as good as the beauty of the flowers so outdid that means it 
was better than the than this beauty also okay it was the beauty of the flowers was even better than the beauty of this scene that the waves were sparkling now this is also another image it creates a beautiful image in our mind so this is another imagery okay a poet could not but be gay now a romantic poet who is influenced by nature a lot he is sure to be very happy when he sees such a beautiful show is it it is walking by this lake so this beautiful show gives him enormous amount of happiness so he says that the poet when a poet a romantic poet sees such a beautiful show beautiful scene he has to be it is it is quite uh, necessary or it is quite normal that he is going to feel very happy he will feel gay he will feel very happy in such a jocund company jocund means cheerful in such a beautiful company the company of the waves the company of this river the company of the flowers the forest these things will make him happy it is normal that the poet a romantic poet will obviously be happy with such a beautiful company amidst nature so the beauty of thousands of daff daffodils surpassed the beauty of the waves that were sparkling under the sun this is the summary again of the third stanza now this part i think is clear now we will move to the last part i gazed and gazed gazed means i went on looking at these flowers and the beauty of the place okay in bengali we say no ha kore takiye thaka constantly dekhte jana dekhte jana like that we tell in hindi so he went on looking at the flowers because it was so very beautiful but little thought little thought means he did not know then that this beauty the beauty of the flowers the effect of the beauty of the flowers in his brain will be so much that it will give him enormous amount of happiness in future what wealth the show to me had brought for example if you have won a prize okay if you have been to a, a sports competition or a singing competition and you win a prize that happiness stays in your mind for a long time isn't it even maybe after one year if you remember that if if you are reminded of that you will be happy isn't it it will give you a lot of happiness that yes i participated in it and i won the competition the same way this poet feels that once the poet has a feeling that yes these are very beautiful flowers but that time he did not know that this show the beauty of the daffodils which is there in his brain will give him such enormous happiness afterwards for oft that means often when on my couch i lie that means when i lie on my sofa see this picture when i lie on my sofa in vacant or in pensive mood pensive means in a very sad and thoughtful mood sometimes it happens no we are depressed we are sad maybe for a particular reason we are all alone then at that time when the poet is sad and all alone what happens is they they means the beauty of the daffodils the memory of the beautiful daffodils flash upon that inward eye inward eye means what sometimes you see certain things and you remember it now where is this image being stored like the sd card of your phone where all the memory is stored in the in your phone there is an sd card isn't it small chip which is there in the phone and stores all the memory so even we have that kind of a memory what is that that is our mind that all the memory are stored over there so this memory is our mind's eye if we think something if if we are reminded of a particular thing it flashes in our mind's eye and then what happens to the poet which is the bliss of solitude as soon as the poet remembers the beautiful daffodils the beautiful show that he had seen once upon a time the poet is no more sad he is he becomes again very happy my heart with pleasure fills so his heart is filled with happiness again and then what does he feel he feels like he is dancing with the daffodils as the daffodils were dancing with the wind they were moving this way and that way because of the wind in the same manner the poet's heart is no more sad and he feels extremely happy so the flowers give him happiness even many years after he had visited the place now what is the main idea of this the main idea is you can write this part down the romantic poet that is wordsworth was hugely satisfied by the beauty of the daffodils beside the lake 
so because he was a romantic poet he was influenced a lot by the beauty of these flowers so even after many years even when many years had passed and he uh, he had visited the place many years back even then the beauty of the flowers delighted him even when a huge number of years had passed he was reminded of the beautiful flowers and he felt very happy then whenever he was sad and lonely this is the theme of the poem main idea that what happens is this romantic poets are so much satisfied with the beauty of nature that it gives them enormous amount of happiness the images of the daffodils used to flash upon his mind and fill his heart with joy it gave him in, in enormous amount of or immense kind of happiness whenever he remembered or he was reminded of the beauty of the daffodils so in this part if you see if you have the zevio pinto which i have with me you will find there are uh, a few reference to contexts there are figures of speech there are questions which will ask you that how are the daffodils compared to the stars i have already discussed what is meant by the margin of the bay which means the the or the, the the bank of the river or the bank of the lake beside which or by the side of which the poet was walking with her with his sister now you will be asked about the musical quality then there is a rhyme beautiful rhyme see pleasure fills daffodils so there is a rhyming scheme also it is rhyming with one another inward i solitude this one is not rhyming but there are other words also which rhyme for example thought but little thought show to me had brought so thought and brought these are rhyming with one another so there is a musical quality also uh, then you will have questions like what is a milky way what wealth is referred to here this part what wealth the show to me had brought what is this wealth this wealth is the memory that stayed in the mind of the poet the memory of the beautiful daffodils even when he was sad many uh, days after that this memory gave him extreme happiness so that is the wealth although he went away from that particular place he could remember that and feel happy again okay so this part i don't think this would be much difficult for you all and even if there is a if you think that there are certain things which you did not understand from here you can write it in the comment section and uh, for the time being you just finish off with the chapters you see if you do not understand a particular part or not ask that clarify it and afterwards when i have done with all the chapters then before the exam right before your uh, boards or right before your exam i will also try and do the question answers from here uh, till then if you have the zevio pinto with you all you can uh, follow that you can see if there is a particular question which you did not understand which you don't know the answer to then you can also write that question in the comment section okay so thank you children if you have liked it you like hit the like button and also subscribe and share bye bye